All right, in this video, I'm gonna finally rewire my Ecobee thermostat so that it can control my furnace in two-stage heating mode. I've already drawn a little mind map of what all the colored wires are, so I really just need to add one wire. I got some blue tape so I can label this 18.5. So 18 gauge, five strands of wire. 15 meters long, cost about 37 bucks. I was gonna get the 18.3, but it was only $1 less. So I figured I'd get the 18.5 in case someone wants to add a humidifier or a two-stage cooling system. The first thing you wanna do before messing around with uh, the two-stage heating is make sure that your furnace actually supports two-stage heating and not just two-stage heating in general, but also that it can be controlled by a smart thermostat. So I'm gonna check out the wiring guide. You can see that this one says there is a note 11 for the Whiskey 2 connection, top of the page there, Whiskey 2 to Whiskey 2, Note 11. So if I just hooked up the Whiskey 2 on my Ecobee thermostat, the Ecobee would not be controlling my furnace. So I flip one page over. What it says is that I also need to flip a switch in the control board, which is switch 1-2 and that will allow it to be controlled by the Ecobee. So if I leave that switch in the off position, what the furnace does is after a set amount of time, it'll go from stage one heating to stage two automatically. So if I don't just hit that switch, then everything I've done is for naught. So I have been running stage two heating this whole time for the last year or two, but it hasn't been controlled by a thermostat. It's just whatever time the furnace wants to kick into stage two, regardless of what the temperature of the house is. So you can see switch one, one dash two, low heat only mode. So I got to turn that on. So definitely consult your user manual for your furnace. And if you don't feel confident doing it, you know, you could just hire an HVAC person to come in and set this up, but pretty, pretty simple, but you definitely need to do a little bit of research on what you got going on and the compatibility of your furnace and your thermostat. Very important. And one quick point before I mess with any of the wires in the thermostat or touch the furnace, I turn the furnace off at the switch and turn the breakers off for the furnace. Now, as far as running this wire goes, the first thing I did is shove the wire up from underneath. So my basement used to be finished. I completely ripped it out over the last year or two so that I could actually do things like rewire things a little bit more easily. And everything was pretty gross down there, but I wasn't able to shove this 18.5 cable up through the wall. It was all flopping around. So I just took a rope, tied a lock to it, and threw it down the hole. Obviously that made it all the way down, no problem. And now I'm gonna just take a piece of tape and tie it to the 18.5 and pull it up through the walls. You can see that I've taken off the baseboard trim and just cut a hole maybe three inches wide by one and a half inch high so that when I put the trim back on, that little hole will be covered right back up. And no real mystery here. Obviously pull the rope up with the taped 18.5 on it and pull it up through the wall. Too easy. Then obviously I'm going to strip back some of the protective sheathing on the 18.5 and I'm going to separate all those other wires. So I'm going to leave those wires there. I'm not going to cut them back. You'll see that down in the furnace room, the installers cut all the wires out. So I'm leaving them there in case somebody wants them in the future. And I only need one wire out of this 18.5. So I've selected a different wire and I'm going with the orange wire because I'm not using an orange wire on the Ecobee at this point. So it'll be a unique wire hooked up just to the Whiskey 2 connection. Now, unfortunately I am rocking three different cables here. So it would have been beneficial just to use the 18.5 and one of the cables and just deleted the other cable, but whatever. So it is tight with the three cables in here. The, the benefit is that if someone wants to expand like I said, into a dehumidifier or another system that's gonna operate off this smart thermostat and work off some of the equipment downstairs, they'll, they'll still have those wires should they want them. So obviously pull the wires through the backing plate for the Ecobee and then put on the Ecobee wire connector and screw that into place. Now all my other wires were labeled previously from the last time I mounted up the Ecobee. So I don't really have to think too much about where those are going to go. And I will throw the link in the description to the last video I did on this. So like I said, you can see that I still have the labels on the wire. So I'm just going to slide them all back in place. 
And then the only thing I'm going to add is that one orange wire. And I'm just going to put it into the whiskey 2, which is the second stage heating connection. Obviously, I got my little mind map there, make sure that I'm doing things right. And trim some cables as necessary. And you do have to push all these cables good and flat so that they don't push the ECOB back out. So you can see all the wires lined up there. And then obviously there's a whole bunch of pins you got to line up on the ECOB and the mounting plates. So you need to be careful with that. You can see I put the trim back on. I'm going to replace all the trim in the house. But for now, I'm going to just rock with that. And here's where the wire came down through the ceiling. Like I said, this whole basement was basically finished previously. And I really just finished ripping everything out maybe two days before I shot this video. So as soon as all the drywall was ripped off the ceiling, I basically got on top of this. And then I just ran that 18.5 right beside all the other cables. Then I used some cable ties to tie it up with all the other furnace control wires. The one thing I did differently from the previous installers is leave about three feet of extra cable so that if I want to change things later, I do have a little bit of flex. You can see I put blue tape on, pulled those cables back over so that those cables are still available. And then I'm just going to take the single wire, which is the orange wire, which is connected to Whiskey 2 at the thermostat and insert it into the Whiskey 2 on the furnace. Now, like I said, I do also have to hit a little switch. I don't know why everything's upside down. Doesn't seem like a well thought out design, but whatever. Here's the number two switch and I've switched it to on and you can see there's like a little direction arrow on the bank of switches pointing to which way is on and off. And just for interest sake, this is a carrier infinity furnace. And that's pretty much it. So. Now that all that's in place, I'm putting the upper and lower doors on the furnace, turn the furnace back on at the switch, turn the furnace back on at the breaker as well as the air conditioner, so I turned everything off. And once the fuses and switches are all turned back on, you can see that the furnace kicked in right away because obviously it's in the fall and it's cold outside so the temperature of the house dropped a little bit while I was working on it. And then I'll go over to the Ecobee and I am still able to control the heat. One thing you gotta do if you're like me and you've been using it as single stage, you need to restart the Ecobee. So go into your settings and stuff and do a full restart so that it can relearn where you've rewired it. So I didn't know this at first, but it wasn't actually working in stage two yet either. So, so you gotta do that restart procedure on the thermostat once everything boots back up. So I dumped the temperature down and the air conditioner is working. So both heating and cooling are working perfectly. The cooling system is only a stage one system, whereas the heating system can operate now at stage one and two off the thermostat. Anyway, thanks for checking out my video. Don't forget to like and subscribe.